I'm down for the long run now Red Corvette and my drop top down Calling up my digits in my Motorola and I'm speeding What's up guys, it's BT here and this is my review of the new Surface headphones from Microsoft. Now you may know the Surface line from their tablet and laptops, well, now they brought that over to the headphone game. I'm not sure why they did that, but I am sure glad they did because that means more competition for Bose and Sony. And at the end of the day, that can only benefit us, if you know what I'm saying. So at $350, these are a direct competitor to the Bose QC35s and the Sony 1000 XM3s and the Sennheiser PXC550s. They have that gray, sexy, minimalistic look from the Surface line that I absolutely love. The ear cups are nice and soft. They remind me a little bit of the Bose QC35s. 35s just not as big and open as those so the headband is adjustable but i would not recommend these for people with big heads because these are quite a small headphone and the clamping force is pretty hard i can only wear these for about three to four hours before i need a rest and i have to let my ears breathe because these are so tight but in turn that does give you a lot of isolation with these headphones so up top they have this plastic material for the cushioning that is very similar to the Beats Solo 3s and Studio 3s and that's quite disappointing for $350. I expect that from Beats but not from you Microsoft. You can do better than that. Come on. Especially when your competitors like Bose is putting up Alcantara which is used in like yachts and premium cars like Porsches and Sony's putting in leather. And you can only put plastic? The left dial controls the noise cancellation and the right dial controls the volume and these are both buttery smooth. These headphones just have that elegance factor that other headphones don't have. Tapping the headphone on either side pauses and plays a song, tapping twice skips forward, tapping three times skips backwards. I've had no issues with the controls on these headphones. They work perfectly and they work all the time. So also on the right ear cup, they have a mute button. I'm not sure why they put that in there, but okay, why not? I mean, can't hurt. And there's also a place to charge by USB-C. In the box, you'll also get a case, which is very nice for you travelers out there to protect your headphones. They also have a 3.5 millimeter jack if you wanna just plug this into a DAC or your phone. For connection, you just hold the power button for five seconds and you pair. You can also connect up to two devices simultaneously over Bluetooth, which is actually pretty cool, but it's just not implemented that well because I will get static on one device when I try to use two. Speaking of unpolished and unfinished, I feel like the Cortana app that is for iOS and Android is not very good. You can dictate to your calendar, you can see what the weather is, you know, all the fun stuff that comes along with a virtual assistant. But the main thing that we all will be using this for is music and they are advertising this as working with Spotify but it doesn't actually work with Spotify yet it's not supported let alone Apple Music and Tidal you know the big ones that most people are using instead you know what they give us iHeartRadio and TuneIn stuff that probably like 1% of the population uses so one thing that I feel like they did really well on this headphone is the mic I'm gonna drop a sound test for you guys right about now all right it's BT here I'm coming to you guys from the Surface headphones right now let me know what you guys think of the mic down below. I actually think this sounds pretty good. So what did you guys think? I actually think that this is one of the top sounding mics on the market at the moment. So, so far so good. These headphones are pretty decent so far, but the one thing that sinks these dead in the water is the battery life. 11 hours for $350 is not enough, Microsoft. What are you doing? We deserve more than that. You cannot travel with these. Some of my trips are 16 hours. What am I gonna do for the rest of the five hours? I cannot listen to music. I cannot watch movies. So they really need to put in battery life that is more worth the price. I mean, when your competitors like Bose and Sony are dropping 30 hours, 20 hours, that's double and triple the amount that you have in these headphones. So what do you do at Microsoft? You can't come to the market with 11 hour battery life. These aren't a set of earbuds. Only earbuds can get away with 11 hours, not full sized over ear headphones. To me, this is a deal breaker and I know it will be for a lot of you guys out there as well. Now the noise cancellation is actually pretty good. I think it's on par with Bose actually. It's not as good as Sony, okay? Sony is the king for this year in noise cancellation and sound. But close second, I would say Bose and Microsoft are neck and neck. It's gonna block out most noise. It's not gonna block out like snapping or things like that. But over time, it does do a good job of blocking out your ambient noises like plane noise and like nature sounds if you're in nature and you wanna block that out. 
The sound of these headphones actually surprised me a lot. They actually sound pretty good. They have that warm, bassy, rich sound signature to them. If you were to put on these with the QC35s back to back, they would actually sound very, very similar. They have that same richness, that same detail that a lot of people love. The treble is nice and smooth and rolled off. There's no sharpness there for like classical music, but it does give you a lot of detail. The soundstage is actually pretty good on these headphones. It's a lot wider than the Bose QC35s in my opinion. So the genres that these go best with are like EDM, rap, R&B, jazz, classical, things that really benefit from that warm sound signature. The genres that I found so-so are like the rock, indie, metal, because I mean, those need more of an analytical, sterile sound to them. So yeah, definitely go with these if you're one of the aforementioned genres. All right, guys, so we've come to the end of the review. Now, do I think that these headphones are worth $350? And I have to say, no, they are not worth the $350 yet. The battery life really holds them back when there are competitors on the market with three times the battery life that sound just as good and have like Google Assistant and Siri uh, support. So why even bother with the Surface headphones? Well, if you are in the Microsoft ecosystem, if you have like a Surface laptop or anything like that, you don't mind the 11 hours of battery life and you just want something to match everything else, sure, go ahead, go with the Surface headphones, knock yourself out. But if you want to get a better deal, go with the Bose QC35s or go with the Sony 1000 XM3s because they are just better all around headphones. It's just not there yet guys, but I think in future versions, I think that Microsoft and their Surface Headphones 2 maybe can actually get it down with these headphones. All right, so thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. It has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Share this video if you loved it, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.